for us to lock people up in the prisons of our heart and to go about grumpy and very unhappy and unfulfilled. The life here is too short. We cannot live life having bitterness in our souls. Bitterness will not let us enjoy our lives. You worry too much about what people do to you. I think we worry too much about what people are doing to us. We, we, we shouldn't be that worried about what people do to us. People are people. And people cannot act beyond their capacity. Hallelujah. So salvation comes with joy. Salvation, when God saved us, he brought joy along with our salvation. So don't lose your joy because of offense. Do not lose your joy because somebody offended you. Do not. I know you are divine. I know the power of God is in your life. I know you are God's special people, but you are also human. You are also human. Let's remember the humanity in us and allow ourselves sometimes to be affected or to be offended, but we must overcome it because even we ourselves will offend people. Praise the Lord. In Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, we start from verses 12 and 14 down to 15. Jesus spoke on this same subject matter and he says, as he was teaching them the Lord's prayer, he said, forgive us our debt as we forgive those who are our debtors. In other words, we receive forgiveness from God in accordance to the way we are forgiving other people. If we are not willing to forgive others, Lord, don't bother forgiving us. That's what you are saying. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others their own trespasses. Hallelujah. Amen. The prayer I have for you that David prayed was in Psalms chapter 142. Psalms 142 verse 6. It says, deliver me from my tormentors. And we are going to be praying that one today by God's grace. Oh God, deliver me from my tormentors. Deliver me from those who torture me emotionally. Every time I remember them, I have fresh hurt in my spirit. Deliver me, oh God, from all my hurt and from all those who are tormenting my soul. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 3, Jesus says, Judge not so that you will not be judged. Judge people. If you judge, if you measure punishment for people with the same punishment, with the same measure you give to others, the same will be meted to you. So judge not so that you will not be judged. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 15, uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 35, so likewise, Jesus said the same thing on forgiveness. He preached so much about forgiveness. And there were repeats of this same teaching over and over again. In Matthew chapter 18 verse 35, Jesus said, Likewise would my heavenly Father do to you. If you do, if you, if you from your heart do not forgive men their sins, my heavenly Father will do the same to you. So, when we say we forgive people, it must be done from our hearts, not just from the mouth. That's why it's important to truly, truly make a decision. I want to forgive. It shouldn't be something done in a rush. Yes, it was painful what they did to you. Yes, you were hurt. Yes, your ego was bruised. Yes, they betrayed you. But you've got to make a decision to forgive. And when you make that decision to forgive, do it from your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when it is done from your heart, your Heavenly Father equally will release you from every guilt and every sin that you ever commit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the greatest antidote for bitterness 
is to respond through love, express love through forgiveness. Respond with love and express your love through forgiveness. So forgiveness is the greatest antidote to bitterness. When you forgive, bitterness is out. Out, completely out. It's the biggest solution to bitterness. Now forgiveness produces an automatic reward of being forgiven by God. Take note of these things. Forgiveness produces automatic result of being forgiven yourselves by God. So if you are gracious towards other men, God will increase his grace towards your life. If you are gracious towards men, God also will multiply the grace he has for you. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are mean, strict, vindictive, and judgmental, God will relate to you the same way. If you are mean to people, very strict and judgmental, and very critical, the same thing you will receive from the Lord. So let's ease up and allow God. Praise the Lord. Amen. All of us at one point or another in our lives needs forgiveness. All of us. Nobody exempted. At one point of our lives or another, we do need forgiveness. Still on a daily basis. Sometimes on our daily basis, we need God's mercy. So why not reach out to other people? Showing mercy. Showing mercy. If you will obtain mercy, you have to show mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Forgiveness is called to Christian doctrine. It is called to Christian doctrine. Without forgiveness, there will be no Christianity. There will be no salvation. Forgiveness is critical for the healing of the body, the soul, and the spirit. Forgiveness is critical for the healing of our physical bodies, our mind, and our human spirit. It is very critical. Without forgiveness, this healing cannot be completed. Praise the Lord. As I praise the Lord. Healing is always accompanied by healing. Forgiveness is always accompanied by healing. Every time there is a true forgiveness, healing flows. The virtue of healing flows in the direction of forgiveness. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. He said, repent therefore and be converted so that your sins will be blotted out and times of refreshing will come upon you from the presence of the Lord. There is always restoration to accompany every moment of forgiveness. Refreshing time, times of restoration, times of refreshment, times of recovery, following immediately after forgiveness. So you have to forgive. If you want to be restored, you have to forgive. When we forgive generally, the power of Satan is broken and God releases restoration instantly. When we forgive people genuinely from our heart, the powers of Satan is broken and God releases restoration instantly. He releases restoration instantly. Many lives, health, prosperity, and families have been locked up in the jail of unforgiveness. Locked up so many families, locked up so many friends, you locked up so many uh, potential helpers of your destiny in that jail of unforgiveness. And you cut them off and say, I have nothing to do with you anymore. And you imprison them. Where are you going to turn them loose? Tonight is the night in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
it sets free the both parties, both the jailer and the one that is jailed. It will release the person who offended you and it will release you yourself from the pain and the burden and the bitterness that it comes with. And then both of you can now have life again. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come alive again. The life we live in is too short. Eternity is too big. And we can't afford to mortgage the current temporal life for the eternity that is waiting for us with Christ. Unforgiveness can lead you to hell. Bitterness can take you to hell. So we cannot afford to harbor it. It destroys us even on earth and it destroys our connection to God and hinder us from getting to Him finally. So we have no choice but to get rid of bitterness. And every spirit associated with bitterness in your lives, they are going to be dealt with severely tonight by the power of God's word and through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, somebody say it loud, Amen. Amen. When you release forgiveness, you activate God's grace in your life. When you release forgiveness, you activate God's grace in your personal life. Our victory, therefore, is in tackling the superior, is tackling offense with a superior weapon of the love of Christ. Tackling offense with a superior weapon of the love of Christ. We can overcome by forgiving, just forgiving. Actually, you can practice forgiveness in advance. I know people will hurt me. I think that's the way God began to teach me lately. I should prepare myself to know that people will definitely hurt me. I will be hurt. When you start a new relationship, just know that it's not possible to have a hitch free life. People are people. You may be 100%, but they are not. So you need to make preparation within your heart to accommodate their weakness. And then you are already ahead of them. Steps ahead of them. So when they bring their offense and when they trample you, you don't take it too personal. You just know he's a man. They are human. And they are natural. And it's expected that the natural man will offend. Praise ye the Lord. I said, praise ye the Lord. When a believer is broken, they do not take offense personally. They overcome offense by the love of Jesus. They don't take offense personally. They overcome offense by the love of Jesus Christ. It is a proof of your maturity. It's a proof of your growing in Christ. Hallelujah. Now this is what God showed me recently and I started working on it very seriously. Because I just realized that many, many of us, in fact, all men could not measure up to God's standard. There is no two persons that is exactly you. We are all different from each other. And we are all differently raised. Now I should give other people the, 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 the opportunity to also be unique to themselves. They don't have to think like me all of the time. They are trained differently. Their brain works differently. No two persons think exactly like me. So it is very likely they would like to do things differently from the way I do them. Praise God. People also have different perspectives than my own perspective. So people should be permitted to have their own views and opinions. And actually there is beauty in that diversity. So God began to show me clearly that I will always get hurt and disappointed as long as I have high expectation of people. He taught me recently, stop putting people on a high pedestal. Human beings will fail all the time. When you have high expectation, I expected them to think better. I expected them to act better. I expected them. So I honor him so high. And I was expecting them to behave differently. You will always be disappointed. Human beings 
will always act as humans. Praise God. Only God will not fail his principles. Only God. So stop having men in a very high expectation. They can stoop. They cannot match up. They will always fall short. And then when they fall short and they couldn't give what you expect, you get disappointed. You get frustrated. And then you begin to get bitter and angry. But if you can take your eyes away from the people and place your eyes on God, let your expectation be on God, and let God be the one to make the people do what you expect them to do. Praise God. Just like the book of John chapter 3 verse 27 to 31 says, No man receives anything unless it's given from above. Stop looking up to men for your solution. I think that is what causes a lot of disappointment most of the time. God started teaching me this particular statement. He said, your expectations of people are so high. Stop putting people on high expectation. If you continue, you keep on having a broken heart. Because none of all those men will be able to measure up to that high standard. They will not be able to attain it. They have, take your eyes away from the people. Place your eyes on me. No more receives anything unless they are given from above. So even if it includes your provision, all the things that God wants to do in your life, just look unto God. Even if somebody promises, just look unto God. The God who promised you is able to compare them to bring it forth. If you look at the people, they will disappoint you. Hallelujah. That's the new lesson that I've just learned lately. And this is because the best of all men are still men. That's why they can't fulfill it. Only God will promise and not fail. Only God will sustain his promises to his people. Only God has the capability and the willingness to make good his promises and his vows. Humans may even be in the interest of wanting to achieve it, but circumstances can prevent them from achieving it. So prevent yourself from being hurt every day. Prevent yourself from being disappointed and therefore getting angry and then losing it and then having bitterness. Start placing your expectation on your God. Look unto him. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, glory to Jesus. Now, he taught me to stop looking at the man of God. Per se, but look at the God and the man. Because the men are only men of God because of the God that is committed to their lives. If you take away God in their lives, they are as ordinary as any other person. Praise God. And so, if you look on men as your focus, you will be disappointed. They are humans too. They are just privileged to have been chosen by God and used by God. Glory. Amen. So you should look at the God behind them. Look at the grace of God upon them. Look at the presence and the power of God in them, not on them as an individual, but on the grace that is upon their lives. Look beyond the man and see the God behind them. Praise the Lord. These are lessons that we need to have so that we will have less disappointments and we will not be much offended as the church is today. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'm coming to the stage where I need to lead you quickly. He said, now that I have forgiven, there are certain things you need to take note of. To forgive people does not mean you leave the door open so that it can trample you over and over again. That is not what it means. Forgiveness does not mean that. Now that you are forgiven, you now need to do a few things. I think two, three things that you need to put in place so that you will not keep on having the hurt repeated, repeating itself. Number one, surely you are not likely to forget immediately you forgive. 
Remember that. You are human. I have forgiven you, but I, I may not forget you anything. Register that in your spirit. The event may still play back in your mind. Your memories will still bring back the situation that brought a hurt to you. Remember that and don't judge or condemn yourself to say, I think I have not forgiven. No, 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 no. Even if you are purely, you've totally forgiven, you will still have a memory of those things done against you. It's all right to have the memory. The only thing, the difference now is, now that you are forgiven, the memory should no longer hurt you. If the memory still hurts you, it's a sign that you are not genuinely clean. You have not truly forgiven. Another sign is, when you have those memory comes back, now how quickly are you, going, are you able to laugh about it? Are you able to discuss it without having much pain anymore? Are you also able to move on without wishing evil on that person who caused you pain? If you still wish that person evil, then it means you have not truly forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. And lastly, you should actually rejoice in the fact that you overcame that hurt. And the last thing you must put in place is that you need to set boundaries so that there will be no repeat. You need to set boundaries so that there will be no repeat of that same episode. There's a wordly saying that says, once beaten, twice shall. You need to put up boundaries. Yes, reconnect and allow fresh relationship to start, but the reality is don't allow yourself to be beaten on the same spot twice. Hallelujah. Amen. Set up boundaries. And I think there's one more. If you still remember what you saw, about, it is not a sign that you have not forgiven. It is natural that memories will linger. I think it's another way to say it. Memories usually of bad things usually linger. Good things, the memories quickly disappear. The day you had extra payment, the day somebody bought you flower, the day somebody remembered to send you, to, uh, send you air time, the day somebody remembered and then put your name and sent you encouraging messages, you are likely to forget quickly. The day somebody prayed for you and you were healed, you are likely to forget quickly. But bad memories, you don't quickly lose it. The memory lingers. So even if the memory plays around sometimes, just tell yourself, I rebuke you, get out of my mind, I overcame that now, and then you move on with your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. Now, there are four prophetic things that comes when people genuinely forgive. Prophetic blessings that comes upon your lives when you genuinely forgive. Number one, the peace between you and God is restored supernaturally. You have peace in your heart. The peace between you and God is restored automatically. The number two thing, and it's better to have peace with God than to have everybody all around you and then you don't have peace with God. Number two, quickly, before we bring the broadcast to a close tonight, there is a reunion a reconciliation and a restoration taking place instantly in our lives. There's a reunion, restoration, and a reconciliation that will come automatically. And thirdly, there is divine healing taking place. Divine healing taking place in your body, physical body, in your emotions which is your mind and in your spirit. After genuine and thorough forgiveness, you realize you sleep differently from the same day. Because there is rest for your soul. And lastly, there is supernatural debt cancellation. Actually, God said he will do this in your lives as you release people from all that they have committed against you. I will cancel your debt. I will do supernatural debt cancellation for you, those people you are owing, God is about to either supply resources to pay them or God is going to knock them off and it will not be remembered again. Oh, that's a powerful one. I receive that in the name of Jesus Christ. Those are the prophetic things you said to me. May the Lord bless you today. And those of you joining us online, I want you
you to know that God had just spoken to your spirit. I want you to prepare yourself for a new time. It's possible to live in forgiveness.